Hey y'all! So I'm Triz, aka Trisha. Basically, what I'm trying to do here is this. When I started my transition uh, about two years ago, I was terrified of makeup. I was scared to even be seen walking down the makeup aisle. I just thought the gender police would just come around the corner and haul me off to pervert jail. I tried to learn about it through YouTube videos, but I don't have the greatest attention span, and I get intimidated easily by the stuff that I'm bad at the first time around, by complicated explanations, or by things that aren't explained well enough. I wanted to find a video series that was specifically for trans people, or uh, you know, non-binary people, or really any kind of person to whom this stuff doesn't feel like it comes naturally. I wanted to find videos that didn't assume that you understood the terminology, the tools, and the techniques. Maybe since then, uh, that's already been made. But I didn't see it back then. I feel like now that I'm further along in my transition, there's a little bit of a void that can be filled and uh, I'm just the girl to do it. So it's time for me to kind of share my skills with you. So join me, won't you, in this journey of learning. I'm sorry. I'm just going to kind of spend today's video just going through my like regular daily beauty routine. This is all stuff some of it I learned from videos and websites, but a lot of it I learned just by doing. And so I'm not a licensed esthetician or cosmologist or whatever. I don't know uh, everything by any means. I just know how to look like this. If you want to know how to look like this, then keep watching. So I'm shooting the intro after this part. So I don't really know what I just said. Sorry. Basically, I'm like a mall cop that keeps falling off the little two-wheeled scooter. I am bad at segues. Yeah, so we're just gonna go through my, like, basic routine. Uh, other folks' systems and routines and everything are gonna be different. That's fine. But this is more of an art form than a science, right? You know what's more important than getting everything perfectly figured out and understood and right the first time? Because that's not going to happen. The important thing is just doing it. And I've been doing this stuff for almost two years now. A lot of cis women my age have been doing this a lot longer. They're going to know more just out of sheer practice. You have to give yourself some credit. You have to be patient and kind with yourself. Lord knows not everyone else will be. So our basic steps here are laid out on the whiteboard behind me. I don't know how well you can see that, but uh, basically we've got skincare, we've got primer, we've got contour, which is kind of shorthand, I'll explain later, but that's contouring, that's highlighting, uh, color correcting. Then we've got foundation, eyes, cheeks, lips, and then we're gonna set it. You'll notice that foundation doesn't show up till about the middle, and you might be thinking, foundation, right? That goes under everything, right? Like you're building a house, you're gonna build it on top of the foundation, right? Well, sure, you're gonna build the house on top of the foundation, but here's the thing. You're building a house, you don't call up the concrete truck first day, right? You don't have them start pouring cement just on a bare property, right? First, you're gonna wanna chop down whatever trees are in your way, make sure the ground is prepared, make sure you got your permits or whatever, I guess. The main thing is, you know, you're gonna wanna clear all the brush, make sure you've got like a smooth level surface before you pour the concrete over it, or else the concrete is going to shift as the ground settles beneath it. So you got to have a good preparation for your foundation or it's not going to sit right and it's going to actually magnify any flaws or um, 
you know, whatever you've got going on. Starting with skincare, I might have mentioned already, or you might have noticed, I'm a transgender woman. I don't really have uh, the money or the time yet for uh, laser hair removal or electrolysis or anything like that. I've been on hormones. I've been on estrogen, again, for almost two years now. Uh, so it's definitely the hairs have gotten finer. It's it's a little bit less growth here, but it's definitely still noticeable when I don't shave. So the way I do it is just fresh out of the shower. I try to make sure there's still some hot water after the shower. That's also when I exfoliate. So exfoliate, right? You're peeling back a leaf. You're peeling back a layer. You know, like a layer of the onion. You're scraping away or getting rid of a layer of dead skin cells that are just sitting there on top of your face to try and uh, help make it smooth and open up the pores. Literally, shaving does that a little bit, but also if you exfoliate a little bit before you shave, it helps the razor move more smoothly and gets you a closer shave. I have a little Aveeno scrub it's fairly gentle, and I just, a couple times a week, not every day, because I don't want to irritate the skin too much, but I just sort of, you know, scrub my face with that and rinse it off before I start putting on the shaving cream and shaving. One thing to note about exfoliants, a lot of people are going to recommend chemical exfoliant. BHAs or AHAs or some kind of acid. I honestly, that's a part that I haven't gotten around to understanding yet, so I skip that. Sorry. A couple times a week I'm gonna scrub my face down with the Aveeno, then I'm gonna shave. And uh, this is one place where it's nice to kind of treat yourself. I've got the EOS, um, shaving cream. It's meant for your legs, really, and your body, but uh, it doesn't really have anything in it that's going to irritate your face, at least in my experience. And it's it's just got a lot of emollients. It's got a lot of moisturizing. So it, it really helps both smooth the razor and kind of keep the skin calm. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to exfoliate, then we're going to shave, and then after we shave, we're gonna use uh, some toner. So in the bathroom by the sink there, I've got some witch hazel. Uh, so again, a lot of times I'll use that after I shave. It's an astringent. It works very well as a toner. It just sort of tightens up uh, the skin. It makes it contract. And so that's going to help close up your pores. Uh, Smaller pores make for a smoother face for, again, a smoother base for the foundation. And it just ends up with a better result overall. Another thing that you might have seen that's kind of trendy is the jade rollers. And these work best if you kind of leave them in the fridge for about 10 minutes before you start. You roll it on your face there. And again, it's that cool low temperature, it's going to help absorb some of the body heat, and it's going to help those pores contract. The skinny end is really good for getting up around the eyes, and it's also just like a comfortable massage. I don't know how much science there is to this, but you know what? It feels nice. It's a nice little treat for yourself. So... Oh god, it, it just feels so nice on the bags under the eyes, um, which I have in spades. And then another kind of toner, I picked this up at TJ Maxx. This is just like some rose water toner. And again, I don't know about the science here. I just know it feels nice. So, a few spritzes on a little cotton pad here. And we're going to tab that. Just lightly. We're not going to cover our face in this. We're not going to expect any layer of this to last. This is just, again, a little bit of a 
toner. It's a low level astringent. It's just going to tighten things up a little bit. Yeah, unfortunately, this is going to be disposable. As far as cotton pads, the only place I've been able to find these consistently is CVS, and not even every CVS, just the ones with, like, the good beauty section. That's where you're going to be more likely to find the good cotton pads. These, they're going to say exfoliating on them. They're lint-free. They don't leave little bits of cotton that you're picking off your face like you just smoked a Lucky Strike cigarette, you know? Okay, so that's that's another thing that I like to splurge on. I'm gonna go ahead and put my hair up right now just to help keep it out of my face. We've exfoliated, we've shaved, we've used the toner. Next thing we're gonna wanna do is moisturize. We've tightened the skin up, but we've also kind of irritated it, right? So we wanna treat it well. And again, that's going to kind of plump it up. It's going to give you maybe a little bit more youthful appearance. And it's just going to make a better substrate, right? For your makeup to go on smooth. Because again, like any nastiness, any grossness that you have right now can end up being magnified. I'm sorry, I'm just noticing this on my upper lip. Oh, oh, looks like we got a little zit. And it looks like I cut myself shaving a little bit. That's okay. It's just a small cut that's dried up. That's a little one. So we're going to talk about what to do with that in the contouring and highlighting um, segment of our program. First, we're going to moisturize. So I've got this anti-puff eye roller. This is from Garnier. Um, again, I do not know the science behind this. I don't know if this is real or if I'm just kidding myself, but it feels nice and I ran out of my fancy eye cream, so this is what we're using. Because my goal It's tough times all around, especially for girls like us, right? So my goal here is to mainly focus on drugstore brands, things that you'll be able to find near you, uh, probably order online real easily if things keep going the way they are, um, and keep everything like fairly affordable. So I've got my eye roller stuff on here. I'm going to use... Uh, my daily moisturizer. So right here I've got Cetaphil. This is um, this one's nice because it's a pretty good moisturizer. It's not like the top of even their line, um, but it's also going to be better than like the Dollar General brand. And it's also got SPF 15 built in because if you don't have SPF built into your moisturizer, uh, you're definitely gonna wanna get you're gonna wanna get something with some sun protection. You're gonna wanna get some facial sunblock. Um, and you can get ones that work better under makeup. Uh, for instance, here's uh, from Neutrogena Sensitive Skin Face. This one's broad spectrum SPF 50. But that's something I'll probably be wearing more in the summertime. And you're gonna just Put that on after the moisturizer and before your primer. This here is a uh, blending sponge. Uh, the trademark named one is called the Beauty Blender. You might have heard of it. Um, there's a lot of knockoffs. CVS makes their own. Other drugstores make their own. Uh, I've tried a few different kinds and I'm going to be honest. It's a sponge. <laughs> there's there's not, it's just a sponge, y'all. There's not that much difference between them. Um, and maybe using this with the lotion is a little bit she-she, but it's fine. It's good. So the point of this is uh, liquids, like liquid foundation or something like that, this helps to blend it into the skin while getting smooth coverage. So you just kind of 
you know, you start with the nose zone, you kind of dab it out, you put some on the forehead and dab it out, and then down by the cheeks and, uh, and the jawline and dab it out and everything, everything, the moisturizer, foundation, any big layers like that, you're going to want to blend them down your neck. And, you know, if you're wearing like a deep V-neck, you might even blend it like kind of down here too, because having a dramatic foundation line, it's just a clear giveaway. The whole thing to a lot of this art of makeup is, it's like a trompe l'oeil painting. I have no idea if I'm pronouncing that right, but one of those styles of paintings that's meant to kind of fool the eye, give a little more 3D depth. And the frustrating thing is, you might end up working really, really hard to perfect one particular skill, and you might wear your new winged eyeliner, for instance, around the office, and people might not notice. Because stuff that's major, 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 when you are, like, right up in the mirror and going like this, at a distance, it doesn't add up to much, but you're going for the gestalt. The nice thing about that, the benefit of that to you, is that, like, minor flaws aren't going to be as noticeable to other people as they are to you. If your winged eyeliner isn't exactly the same angle, right? You're going to notice it way more than anybody else is, so be kind to yourself. Alright, so I've got my face moisturized, I've got under the eyes moisturized, and kind of around the eyelids there. Uh, I'm going for the lips. And since I'm inside a lot, and since it's winter, I'm going heavy duty. I'm going with the Aquaphor Lip Repair. You can get other stuff like this, um, but this stuff's great. It's got, it's totally greasy. It's totally greasy. It's got a lot of petroleum jelly to it. Like, that's kind of the main thing. There's a few different kinds of moisturizers, like there's a few different kind of like theories of action. And petroleum jelly is an unguent, emollient, I don't remember the chemistry words. But it's it's like the oldest, like heaviest duty kind of just like spread some fat on it. Right? And so there's a reason that it's still around. It works. But it's not always the most comfortable. But anyway, it's important right now. Another thing I might be doing a few times a week, uh, maybe not when my lips are at the most chapped, like in the very height of winter, but a little bit after that, once I've recovered a little bit, uh, I've got this Sugar Lip Scrub. This one's another store brand from CVS. Uh, it's in mint. You know, you can probably make your own. It's mainly sugar, like granulated sugar and petroleum jelly. Just like uh, the facial scrub, like the idea is to exfoliate. If you have a lot of like little peeling up layers and everything, lipstick isn't going to lay down as easily. Just grab up a little bit of that lip scrub, you kind of exfoliate a little bit, rinse it off, like water's gonna help break down that sugar and wipe off the excess petroleum jelly. And your lips are just gonna be a lot smoother. They'll be raw, so anytime you're doing any kind of exfoliating, anytime you're doing any kind of scrub, you're gonna want to moisturize like as soon as possible. That goes for shaving, that goes for shaving your face, that goes for shaving your legs, that goes for shaving anything. Anyway, that is moisturizing covered. So next we're going to want to use some primer. Uh, this one here is the ELF. I want to let you know they didn't pay me anything. I'm going to bring them up a lot because they're cheap, uh, they're vegan, they're cruelty free. I think a hundred percent Again, I, I wouldn't swear to that. I'm not, uh, I don't speak for them, but I think they are. 
And uh, also just all their packaging is just dead simple. Everything says what it is. You know, it's not like, uh, you know, this, this. If you, if you don't know what makeup is, you pick this up. It just says Maybelline, the colossal. I don't know. What is that? What is that even? This, blemish control, face, primer. What do I have? Blemishes. What is this going to do? Control them. What else is it going to do? It's going to prime my face. Beautiful. Easy. So I'm going to just dab just a couple squirts on the back of my hand. So I'm going to grab my blending sponge again. And before you use these, you want to get them wet and squeeze them out. So they're going to be just slightly damp. You don't have to squeeze out every last ounce of moisture. You want to get it just a little bit damp so that it's flexible, so that it's soft, so that when you're dabbing stuff onto your face, it can spread it out in a more even layer. So I'm just going to pick that primer up um, and just dab it onto my face. Again, we're going to start with kind of the nose zone. We're going to spread it out. We're going to spread it out, blend it out, and then pick a little bit more up. I got some on forehead, on the cheeks, down by the jawline, a little splash on the ears. Now my ears, um, I've got a couple piercings that are still healing. Uh, so I'm going to be pretty gingerly around them. Also, you want to be very careful around the eyes because there is a salicylic acid in this blemish control primer. That is not something you want to have in your eye directly. But I'm going to dab it on my eyelid there. Uh, they do sell special eyelid primers that help your eyeshadow stick better. Um, but we're broke. We're cheap. It's fine. Alright, so we've got the primer on. We're going to kind of give it a second to breathe uh, and kind of dry it out a little bit and get tacky. Kind of like the back of a post-it note. Uh, so this is the step now that I wrote down as contouring. Um, there's actually going to be a lot more than that going on, or there could be. It's up to you how much you want to do right here. I don't seem to have my color correcting stick. Color correcting is something you might want to do if... Like, say like me, you've got a very naturally reddish, ruddy kind of complexion, and you want to knock some of that back. Or, again, if you're like me, and you're a trans woman, uh, you're still, no matter how much you shave, if you haven't had laser, you're still going to have a little bit of what we call beard shadow. So where the stubble is, where the little remnants of the hairs are, it's going to look a little bit more blue-hued than the rest of your face. So if we had a color correcting kit, uh, what we'd want to do is, you know, you go on the opposite end of the color wheel from blue, what do you get? Orange. So we'd have an orange color correcting uh, kind of going on over here. And then over the redness, what's on the opposite end? Green. So if you get like the color correcting wheel from uh, like Wet n Wild or NYX or whatever, there's going to be some like mint green kind of paste, kind of putty stuff. So you can spread that just all along kind of right here and maybe a little up here if you're pink like me. The theory behind that is that it's going to help knock unnatural looking colors back under the eyes too. If you've got bags under the eyes, you're going to get, or prominent veins, you know, you're going to get a little bit of a bluish tint. So again, a little bit of that orangeness might help. That's the theory anyway. Uh, some folks are skeptical. Some folks think that it kind of tends to look unnatural. 
And I'm going to go ahead and claim that I'm one of those people because I don't have my stuff for that. What I do have is, again from ELF, a contour palette. It comes with a nice little mirror. Uh, so it's got two shades of highlighter and two shades of like kind of bronzer or darkening stuff. So for contouring, technically there's kind of two complements of this. There's contouring and there's strobing. So strobing, this is probably the part that's going to work the best. That's when you just kind of put some highlights on the parts of the face that are like closest to the camera and would be catching more of the light, right? Again, we're thinking about this trompez l'oeil painting. So we're going like kind of tops of the cheekbones, we're going the bridge of the nose there and the tip and the uh, philtrum and just above the chin and kind of a little bit along the forehead. I've also got some highlighter slash uh, concealer. Well, it's concealer, but I use it for highlighter too sometimes. This is from NYX. It's the Can't Stop, Won't Stop. If I remember right, it's seven or eight bucks. Um, and if you use it judiciously, it'll last a good long time. So this, I could use it for uh, highlighting too. Um, but I'm just gonna put a little bit on that zit and that little red spot. No, oh, we got a couple little spots over here. This doesn't look very natural, right? This doesn't look normal. This doesn't look right. We're gonna use the narrow end of the blending sponge. We're gonna blend that out. Gonna blend that out. Blend that out, blend that out. Okay. And boop, 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 boop. So we're, you know, we're just blending it out a little bit because there's, there are going to be layers on top of here. Basically, strobing is going to be the more effective, the more natural looking of the two out of strobing and contouring. So I'm going to go just kind of with the lighter of the two shades here, and I'm going to draw kind of like... From the sideburn zone to down here, I'm going to draw like a little bit of a triangle. And again, just a little bit of a triangle. And you might be saying, I don't really see it, right? But that's the thing. We are just, we're dealing in subtleties here. I'm going to add a little bit more in. But... You know, we're just sort of softly blending that in. I'm going to add just a little bit at the corners of my jawline because, I don't know if you noticed, I've got kind of a prominent jaw. Oh yeah, and we can go with a little bit on the sides of the nose here to just sort of make it look a little bit cuter, a little narrower. It's fine. I'm going to pick up... This part's a little more experimental. I'm going to pick up a little bit of this, a little bit of this. I'm going to swirl them together because we're, we're not looking to change the luminance here. The, this is my attempt at a makeshift color correction for the beard zone. I am just going to... just going to... and we'll see how this looks. You know, once, once you've got your routine down, you can do weird little improvisatory things like this and sometimes it'll even work out. I think this is not working out perfectly, but that's fine. You know, we're learning. We're trying different things. It's fine. That was something that drove me nuts, right? Early on watching a bunch of makeup videos on YouTube, people were like, okay, so you're going to want to use a combobulator uh, but, you know, all I've got is a Zubifier, so we're just going to use that instead. And he used to drive me nuts. I was like, well, but what do you, what are you supposed to use for what, where, when? It's fine. It's fine. No, really. Really. There's a lot of this stuff where it's just like, oh, 
yeah, I can use eyeshadow to highlight right here if I want. I can... Almost none of this stuff is like 100% like, oh, this only works on this zone of the face. Only ever. Like, this is where we can experiment. This is where we can try different things. So, I'm feeling pretty good with my concealing, my strobing, a little bit of contouring. Again, I don't have a lot of faith in it, because if you do really heavy contouring, the thing is, it's kind of like one of those 3D chalk paintings on the sidewalk, where if you look at it right from the perfect angle, it looks incredible, the 3D effect. You're like, whoa! I, it really looks like I'm looking at a guy walking down a staircase into the middle of the sidewalk. But if you look at it from the other direction, it just looks like a really stretched out guy with a bunch of rectangles. So if you look at a contoured face, a really heavily contoured face, like straight on in perfect lighting, you're like, oh my god, what sharp cheekbones you have. What a narrow, beautiful little nose. What a... whatever. But if you look at it, like, in a little bit different lighting, especially in the daytime, especially, like, not at the club, at the grocery store, something like that, it just looks... draggy. And I don't want to say that... I don't want to say that as a pejorative, right? Because it's a look, and it's an intentional look, and it's an another art form. What we're doing here, this isn't drag, this is who I am. This is, you know, we're sort of enhancing and drawing the eye to certain natural features that I already have, like these lips or these cheeks and cheekbones. And you've got something beautiful about your face, too. I promise. Drag is just, it's an intentional look. It's caricature, it's clowning, it's a joyous expression of something that we're not doing here. That's all I'm trying to say about that. So, for foundation, there's a lot of different kinds. It's terrifying. I don't understand it still. So, again, I just stick with the cheap stuff. If you look at the top, and they've gotten better about uh, sort of labeling it. So it's going to have, I don't know if this is going to focus, but it's got the number, it's got the name of the shade, and then it says what kind of undertones. So this one is number 150, Alabaster for neutral pink undertones, meaning if your skin is not like super duper ready, and I'm, again, I'm kind of going by, like, my base color here. I'm not going by the parts where rosacea has ravaged my face the worst. I'm just kind of, like, going by, like, okay. I don't know. Boop. It's not a perfect match, but it's it's pretty good. Like, you'll see it once it's on. I've just learned by experimenting, right? That's the greatest thing about trying the cheap makeup is that you get to try more different shades, you get to try on things, and if it doesn't work, okay, so maybe you're out six bucks or whatever. Sometimes it's worth it just to learn the lesson that, you know, oh, this style of BB cream, this style of foundation, whatever, isn't for you. It's not your fave. Just like with the moisturizer, just like with the primer, I've got, I'm using the back of my hand for a palette. I'm just kind of swirling it around a little bit, picking it up here. Um, and I'm, I'm kind of dabbing it out before I even start putting it on my face so that we can get not big globs. We're getting a relatively nice, even layer. It looks so bright. It looks like so much, right? But it's going to be fine once we blend it out, once we do everything else. I'm going to look less like a mime, I promise. Boop, 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 boop. So this is, yeah, 
again, I'm being gingerly around the lobe here. If you're not pierced or if your piercings have healed a long time ago, you're going to want to get some of that on your lobe too. And we're blending down, blending down the neck so that there's not just like a line of like tan and stubble and then white, right? I'm blending down and I, you know, this has got an interesting neckline. So I'm going to blend out to the sides here just a little bit. That's just me. That's just preference, right? So I'm going around here. And now some people will say that it's better to put your eye makeup on first and then foundation. Uh, so that you can fix your errors more easily. The dust from the eyeshadow comes off uh, more easily. Uh, that's a matter of taste, as far as I can figure. How are we doing over there? You feeling comfy? You vibing? I wish I could hear your response. I didn't really think that part through. It's fine. Okay, so this is, like, this is the part, this is one of those skills that it kind of takes a while to master. Um, and all I can say is just try, try again. And what I don't mean is do what I did in the beginning and put your foundation on, get frustrated, wash it off, Put your foundation on, get frustrated, wash it off, rinse and repeat for like 10 different times and end up with your face feeling chapped and raw, right? I mean, when you're getting started, you're, you're going to be frustrated. Be kind to yourself. Uh, this stuff takes time to learn. It's okay. You're doing great, honey. You're trying. And that's the important part. You just keep trying and eventually the muscle memory kicks in. Right? It takes a while for your body to understand what kind of pressure we're going for here. Because we're not mushing it in. You're going to notice if you try to mush it in too hard, you're either, depending on how much foundation you've got on the sponge, you're either going to lay it down too hard or you're going to start picking too much of it up. So we're blending it around. I'm kind of overdoing it just for the sake of so I can keep talking to you. Um... And look, we're looking less mimey already. And as we do the other finishing touches, some of the oils here are going to uh, just sort of suck up into the face. Um, not all of it. I mean, there's it's still going to be obvious that we're wearing foundation, right? Especially because this is the cheap stuff. It is still going to be a little bit oily. It's going to be a little bit chonky compared to the fancy stuff. But that's okay. Because you know what? I've seen what your grandma wears. And we're still going to look better than her. Next, we're going to do the eyes. Where are we? Boop, boop, boop. There's foundation handled. We're going up to the eyes. Like, there's a reason people work so hard on such a small area of the face. Because it's what people focus on when they look at you. Eyes are the window to the soul. I'm gonna start with my brows. Now, you might find that you want to pluck your brows if they're particularly bushy. Personally, I just, I did it a little bit for a little while, but I got terrified of over plucking and looking way too 90s with it. So, like, having a little bush is, like, kind of very now. Uh, so this is a brow pencil. Again, ELF. It's got kind of this little wand back end, so you can just kind of brush. You can kind of comb your eyebrows. You ever think about that? Yeah, like comb your eyebrows. So that's going to help everything kind of face the same direction, look a little bit less wild. And then we're going to use the pencil, and calling it a pencil is a bit of a stretch. It's just like a waxy stick that you kind of twist up out of, out of the body of the thing. 
and basically we're just going in we're not like coloring right we're not coloring a big swath we're just kind of like dabbing in some uh some extra kind of hairs i'm gonna follow the directions of the hairs more or less it might not look like a major difference to you but again that's what we're doing we are adjusting we're making adjustments we're doing trompeteur i really need to learn how to pronounce that that's the brows handled i'm not going to stress them past this point so for eyeshadow you can get like very small very basic palettes or you can get big ones that offer you a lot more choice um if you're just starting out, I'd recommend getting something smaller because it's going to kind of narrow down your choices, which is going to also narrow down your fears. But today I'm going to go with my favorite. This is the ELF, the Rose Gold Nude Palette. Uh, you can tell it's my favorite because some of these are just down to the bare metal. So it's going to come with this range, the top one, that's going to be highlighter. We already kind of highlighted, but... Let's just do it a little bit, just kind of under here, under the brow ridge, and then a little bit under the eyes too, just... We're going to go with a lighter shade. Let's go with this glittery pink one, um, just because um, we're trying to go on YouTube. We're trying to get famous. I'm not trying to get famous, I'm just trying to help some folks. So yeah. We're just gonna brush that on, brush that on under here, and you know you want to have a look in the mirror, see how it looks. Don't stress it so much. Just kind of, you're just making a light coat for the first light color. Then we're gonna go with kind of our, you know, kind of your featured color. So this is going to be a little bit darker, a little stronger pigment. Uh, and that's going to be in the kind of the middle of the lid. So for this one, I am going for just a little darker sparkly pink. And this is where you want to be a little more careful and kind of dust off. And I've still got my wet sponge. I've still got a little bit of foundation on the back of my hand. I can touch up little mistakes. And then we're going to pick a darker shade. Um, and I'm going to grab my crease brush for this. Personal preference, but it's got a narrower, more rounded tip. And that's going to help kind of control where you're laying down this darker shade. I'm just going to tap off the excess here. I should have been doing that the whole time. But it's especially important for the darker shade. And we're going to put it on kind of the outside corner and the crease zone up there. Just going to swoop that in a little bit. Alright, that went a little further out than I wanted. But this is okay. This is okay. That's why there's erasers on the ends of pencils. Because we all screw up. We all overdo it. All of our hands slip. We all make mistakes. And we get back on the horse. That's the important part. So, that's our eyeshadow. It's nothing terribly fancy. We're just going for kind of a kind of a daytime look. Now for uh, our eyeliner. This is my favorite part. Okay, like, so I was in love with Kat Von D's uh, tattoo liner. Uh, I tried the Sephora knockoff. That did not impress me. Um, but what I do enjoy that you can find in a drugstore and isn't from Kat Von D, which i Think she's cancelled? I don't really know what the deal is there. It's the Maybelline Master Precise All Day. From the Master. So, if you look at it, it's just like a long, skinny marker. But, you know, you can see that kind of shape. 
That makes it easier to make cat eye kind of situations. So this is something that it took me a long time to get comfortable with. So we're going to go down by the lash line and up on the lid a little bit. And just kind of a dot a little bit past the corner of the eye there. So we're looking good, right? You can already see kind of the difference having a little bit of eyeliner makes. So they say to kind of follow the bottom lash line up. Um, and what they mean is kind of this curve. You kind of follow that curve up for the bottom curve. And then uh, make kind of a nice little curve to match it from the top up. From the top of the eyeliner that's on your eye. Boom, boom. I'm going to go ahead and do the other side real quick. Okay, ooh, we like this. And of course you can go as dramatic with it as you want. It already kind of has the effect of having like a stray humongous eyelash uh, sticking out at the end, right? And that's what's up next. We're going with the mascara today I'm using. ELF. Lash Extending Mascara. So, again, there are so many different types of mascara on the market, and it's overwhelming. Uh, this is nice because it is $4, and it says what it does, and it does what it says. If you cry a lot, it will run, so will most mascara. Waterproof mascara, in my humble opinion, is just not worth the money and effort. But that's just one girl's opinion. So you see what we're doing? We're starting close to the eye. This is another thing that takes some time to get used to. If you're the kind of person like me who goes to the ophthalmologist and they do the puff test and you you know, you jerk back every time. It's going to take some practice. It's like putting in contact lenses. It takes practice to get comfortable having something like this so close to your eye. But the idea is you can see it's almost like Velcro, right? There's little hooks on the wand that kind of carry this oily, like oleaginous substance. And you want to kind of get those little hooks in between the lashes and move a little bit side to side as you twist up to cover the lashes. And, you know, you'll do a few coats. I've done probably a few extra since we've been talking. And then I'm just going to kind of swipe the lower lashes because mine are not super pronounced, uh, which just makes it difficult. And I like things easy. All right. So again, you can see the difference. Haven't done this side. I have over here. We're looking like cartoonishly feminine with the eyes. My girl is straight up looking like Daisy Duck, Minnie Mouse over here. Oh, we love to see it. Okay. Okay. So, I'm feeling a lot better about my face already. So, mm. Just gonna do a little touch up there with the last little bit of foundation 
on my hand, but you can see it's already kind of slurped up into my face already. I am already looking like less clownish. My face looks like a part of my body, right? So that's good. Uh, next, I'm just gonna hit my cheeks with a little bit of blush. Boop, boom. I like the cheap stuff. And for a brush for this, I love the little kabuki brushes you can get. Um, just because, like, look, it just kind of fills up the surface there. You tap off the extra and then just give it a little boop, 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 boop. Just lightly tap. We are going for a subtle effect. You might barely notice it, and that's okay. Beep, boop. So just bringing a little bit of that rosiness back to my cheeks. So you might be saying, like, why do you want to cover your cheeks up and then bring it back? It's all a matter of, like, I'm controlling how red they are, right? Not the rosacea. I'm in, I'm control. in control. And finally, I'm going to do the lips. This is another zone where we could get extra with it. We could, you know, like lip primers exist, and then we could do a little lip pencil to really like firmly define it, but we're keeping things easy. So one kind of lip, I don't even want to call it lipstick, it's more of a lip stain, but this is the Maybelline Super Stay Matte Ink, and the shade is number 80, called ruler. So what's nice about this is that it stays on a long time, it goes on easy, and they've got this like thoughtful, well-designed uh, teardrop applicator. I don't really care for, here I'll show you my CoverGirl Melting Pout mat that has what we call the doe foot applicator. It's better than nothing, it's better than like a brush, but it's clumsy. It's hard to get good definition with it. With the teardrop, you've got like the kind of little reservoir in the middle held in there by surface tension, and a little diamond shape, and you can just... Uh, see, I'm, I'm already getting sloppy. I'm gonna need a mirror. I'm following the curve of of my natural cupid's bow and maybe extending it just a little bit but since we didn't use a lip pencil we don't want to uh, overdo it we don't want to go too dramatic uh, in coloring over where the boundaries of the lips are oh it's hard to talk and do this at the same time Okay. So, yeah, this is not perfect. This is a day-to-day, -to -day, going around town, messing around kind of a look. But I'm feeling pretty good about it. So I keep, I keep just like some store brand Kleenex on my workstation because it's really helpful to have something to dab your lips with. If you're using like a liquid, like lip stain, you're going to want to blot it a little bit. So that way you don't have like too much of a layer on here that takes forever to dry and kind of dries lumpy. You just want a thin little coating on the lips. We're mostly done. We're basically done. I'm just going to do one last thing, and that is setting it. A couple different ways you can do this. You can use a setting spray if you're in a pinch, and make sure you cover your eyes when you use this. You can use hairspray. It's been known to be done. I wouldn't super recommend it, just because 
of the smell, if anything. A friend of mine, when I was earlier on in my transition, was kind enough to give me a little jar of Maybelline Mineral Power Finishing Veil. So what you want to do here, you want to, uh, it's kind of got holes like a salt shaker, you tap a little bit out into the lid, kind of shake that up, move it around. I'm going to tap the my brush off over here, get some of the, um, the blush off my brush. And we're just going to kind of swirl that in the finishing powder. We're going to tap that off. We're not going all over the face. We're just kind of going to go a little bit in the T-zone and the cheeks. Just kind of the oilier areas. And again, that'll help just kind of... Um, I mean, the main ingredient, I think, is talc, right? It's just going to kind of help set the oiliness of the foundation. It's going to just help that kind of dry out into like a smooth looking, nice, nice layer. The other things about, even if we're not going for like the trendy glossier kind of a look, we're still like, you know, we're very matte with this look. Very matte finish. But it's still smooth. You want to have it smooth. You don't want lumpy, right? Um, anyway, thank you for watching. Uh, please absolutely do hit me up with your feedback because as I learn more, I would like to make this a regular series. And I just, I want to know, what do you like? What are you into? What do you want to know about that I can learn about and then make a video about? Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I'm your girl Trez, and um, this has been a make a vid video thing. Okay, cool, nice, good. <laughs> yeah, insert my catchphrase here. Um, hell yeah.